Welcome back to our series on Applied Regression Analysis. I'm Mark Ledbetter, and this is Lecture Video 14. We are in Chapter 5. We're talking about straight, straight line regression, and this is Part 2. We are going to cover Sections 5 and Section 6 in this video. We're talking about the best fitting straight line and the quality of that fit. Uh, and the same measure we use to talk about the quality of the fit is the estimate of the variance. So. Let us begin with determining the best fit line. We do this using something called the least squares method. And it requires calculus, but we're not going to uh, require you to do that in this course. This course doesn't require calculus as a prerequisite. So this least squares method helps us determine the best straight line. Okay. And that line has to minimize the sum of squares of the deviations. These are the vertical distances from the line to the observed uh, or actual value. So the y's are the actual values. And the yi hats, they got a little hat on them. Those are the um, fitted or estimated values uh, from our line, from the equation of the line. OK. So you can see here that, um, and this distance is called a residual, a deviation or a residual. We'll use both. Um, so it's this distance from the actual point to our estimated point. Notice that the y has a hat on it, but the x doesn't, because again, we're fixing x. I'm going to uncircle those. All right. So what we do is we want to minimize the, not just these distances. We're going to minimize the square of those distances. So here... Uh, we've written that as the sum. Actually, the, we're, we want to minim minimize the sum of the squares of these deviations. Okay. So we're going to let yi hat be the estimated response okay, at x sub i. And again, this is based on the fitted regression line. And then we have the equation for our regression line right here. And it's yi hat equals beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat times xi. Where did the hats come from? Well, we don't actually know the slope. We don't actually know the intercept, so we have to estimate them using the data. When we estimate something, we put a hat over it. So beta naught hat is an estimate of the population parameter beta hat. Same thing with uh, beta naught, I'm sorry. And beta 1 hat is the estimate of the population parameter beta 1. Okay. And this vertical distance between the observed value, the actual values that we observed, and the estimated or fitted values is given by the absolute value of the distances, right? Absolute value is a distance, by the way. Um, but we want the squares. Uh, there's reasons why we don't minimize this. One is it's mathematically uh, difficult, but it has been done. People have done it. But also, uh, we find that we get a better result or a better fitting line if we use the least squares method. And so we're going to call this the sum of squares error. Okay, So that is one. In fact, you see that is number three over here. It's also referred to as the residual sum of squares. And it's also called the sum of squares about the regression line. Apparently, as statisticians, we can't choose just one way to call things, so we've got several. <laughs> All right. And so what we did was we took yi minus yi hat, and now we're substituting in for yi hat. And remember that yi hat was given up here as uh, beta naught hat plus beta 1 hat x. And so we've got this minus sign, so we have to distribute it, so we get minuses here. Okay. So the measure of SSE is really important in assessing the fit of the um, straight line. Okay, it's very important there. And um, 
So it it's there's an essential to ascent, there's an essential property, excuse me, of SSE, and that is if we have these um, the sum of squares error. If we have beta one hat and beta naught hat as the least squares estimates, then any other estimate that we come up with for these, we'll call it beta naught star and beta one star, we have to have this relationship. In fact, this relationship is true that the sum of squares error calculated using beta hat, beta naught hat and beta one hat that sum of squares error is always less than or equal to any other. So basically we're saying we have the best uh, sums of squares error uh, that we can get using these estimates. Now this is the calculus and what we do is we have two unknowns and so basically two variables and so we take the derivative of this with respect to beta naught and we get this equation and we set it equal to zero to get a um, minimum and that of course is dependent upon the sign of the second derivative which is going to be uh, negative in this case so uh, negative means that it's uh, or, I'm sorry it's going to end up being positive it's negative now for the first derivative but it's positive for the second derivative meaning it's concave up meaning it's a minimum and we do the same thing for uh, to find uh, beta 1 hat is we take the derivative with respect to beta 1. And we solve these as simultaneous equations, so they're dependent upon each other. And when we do that with lots of algebra, we come out to these two equations, which you definitely want on your formula sheet. And so we can write our least squares line using this form, or we can substitute in and um, using beta naught, we can substitute in for beta naught hat, and we get y hat is equal to y bar plus beta 1 hat times x minus x bar. Notice that the point x bar y bar is always on the line. Always. Okay. So we're going to consider the measurements of age and systolic blood pressure that we talked about earlier for 30 individuals. I've given you the data set here. So here you have the values, and you can look through those at your own convenience. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, uh, do a scatter plot, but now we're going to plot the best fitting lines. So the solid line is given by this equation here, and it includes all values. But notice this value, 47 to 20. It's an extreme value or an outlier. Now, we're not going to talk about uh, how we deal with that now, but we will in Chapter 14, and it's a serious um, consideration. You don't just throw out values from your data. You, if you want to throw it out, you're going to have to figure out if it's a mistake or not. And if it's a mistake, then you can remove it from the data. If it's not, then you'll do what we did here, and you'll calculate it. Uh, the solid line is with it, and the dash line is with it removed. Notice that because this is such a high value, positive, that the dash line, when we remove it, is lower uh, than the solid line. Okay. And so we can see the effect of removing, I'm sorry, we can see the effect of removing just that one point. Okay. Now let's talk about how we uh, assess the quality of the straight line fit, and we're going to use that same predictor to estimate sigma squared. So once we have the least squares equation, we want to evaluate whether it's the fitted line is actually does aid us in predicting uh, y. And if so, to what extent? Remember our questions had to do with extent, uh, and so we're still going to do that. So we have our uh, definition of SSE here, and this is the measure that helps us answer uh, that question. So of course, if SSE is zero, then the line is a perfect fit. In other words, yi is equal to yi hat for all i, and every observed point is on the estimated line. But as SSE increases, the fit gets worse. In other words, the deviations or residuals get bigger. So there's two contributors, two contributors to inflation of the uh, sum of squares error, or the variation. 
First is, if we just have a lot of random variation in the response variable y, then of course sigma squared is going to be large. And uh, then the second one may be that the assumption of the straight line is not appropriate. And it's really important to determine the separate effects of each of these contributors. For now, we're going to assume that number two is not an issue. In other words, we're going to say, yes, we know whether or not it's a straight line uh, is appropriate. And we can usually tell that by looking at the scatter plot. Now, we want to estimate uh, sigma squared, that constant uh, variance for each value of x. And we remember that the uh, error is distributed as a normal with zero mean and sigma squared is the variance. And remember that SSE is our sum of squared errors. So we're going to estimate sigma squared uh, using s squared sub y given x. Okay, so usually I say the sub first and then the square. So s sub y given x squared. And that's going to be 1 over n minus 2 times the sum of squares. We call this the mean square error. And so the mean square error, or MSE, is what we use to estimate the variance. Now, you may be wondering why we're dividing by n minus 2 instead of n minus 1 like we did for just a regular sample. Well, the reason is, in the regular sample, the only thing that we have to estimate is mu. We're estimating mu using y bar. And we end up subtracting 1 from n. But when you look at the equation of SSE and you plug in for y hat, you'll notice that we have to estimate both beta naught hat and beta one hat. And so we have two things that we have to estimate. So we subtract two uh, from the degrees of freedom and that gives us n minus two. There is a more rigorous explanation, but that is not for this course uh, due to our, re our prerequisites. Okay, so that's it for this lecture. Don't forget to scan your lecture notes by midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. Be neat for you, because you're your own customer for that. Update your formula sheet with the equations we mentioned up above. And if you have any questions, come to my virtual office hours. If those don't work for you, email me. We'll see you next time.